<laughs> oh, welcome, welcome, welcome to the podcast here on Pollute Your Soul. We're here with Texas Jesus, a little wretched. Thank you. Thank you again for returning. Thank you, man. No, the thanks is all on this side of the camera, I assure you. Texas Jesus bless you, man. Thank you for having me back on your show. Texas Jesus blesses me. Um, He's a fucking G. Uh, We talk a lot over text, like whenever. Like we, we're always talking. We're always swiping down on each other's stories. Like he's the boy, he's an artist, and he's a he's a you know, he's he's the wizard, you know what I'm saying? Like he's a fucking <laughs> he's a religious figure. Um that's right. What do you would you say you're doing that cultural engineering? That's what you're doing. Yeah, cultural engineering, that's right. It's not a cultural engineering, but yeah, that's what we're doing over here. Hundred percent of the time. That's what I am full time. Part time rapper, full time cultural engineer. Full time cultural engineer. Um, now there's many topics that we could go into, but first I want you to talk about that hat that we're not going to be able to see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. The, the tinfoil cowboy hat. Yes. I assure you, everyone will see it very soon, but yeah, it's my, it's my tinfoil cowboy hat. I like to put on a tinfoil hat every now and then and get down with some crazy conspiracy hours, whether it be aliens or whether it be ancient civilizations such as Tartaria. Uh, yeah, I put it on from, put it on from time to time. You know about that. <laughs> okay, so, like, I'm kind of confused. We could kind of just go into Tartaria first. But, by the way, on on, audience, before we kind of get into this, I just want to say to definitely check out Lil Wretched's music. Um, he's dropping a new song as well, which we'll talk about as well later down the line. Um, he's a great artist. Uh, he's worked with a variety of good artists in the final core, core, you know, cloud rap scene, whichever you want to call it. He's uh, been in the game for a long time, and he's definitely, the way he uses his voice, he has, has these different kind of vocal tones, which are fucking crazy. Like he's little 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 and then, and then he goes over, <laughs> he's like, he's always on some crazy shit. His, his voice is like, he's, there's a lot of layers to his voice, and I definitely recommend checking his music. And we will be talking about his music later in the episode. But first, let's get into the ancient civilization of you, Tartaria. Dear um of course um we got to give you your um your props before we get into it of course and um, i appreciate it man thank you so much for the kind words you cultural engineer so what, <laughs> engineer, what what do you know what engineer is from prometheus if anybody ca catches that definitely check out prometheus we'll talk maybe we might talk about that later but what do you know yeah. about tartaria tartaria the ancient lost civilization that comes up on the deep dark web in 4chan. Hmm. Um, it's interesting, man. Uh, I think I believe there are remnants of this civilization all around us in the United States, South America, Africa, Asia. I think it's all over the world. I believe this was a one world global spanning civilization. I believe it's very ancient. It goes back a long, long time. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, the uh, Tartars, the Tartarian uh, elite, they're still very active and uh, hold the keys to uh, the secret technology, the keys to unleash the, the, the beasts that live inside the earth. I'm fairly certain. This is all just speculation, though. I have no evidence to support these wild claims. Yeah. <laughs> um. So what, where, where, what, so is all around the entire globe, is that what you're saying? Or is it kind of like an Atlantis type of thing? Yeah, so I, it's funny, I think uh, when people talk about Atlantis, when people are talking about the lost civilization of Atlantis, I think a lot of times uh, people are actually talking about Tartaria. I believe that Tartaria was at the, I, okay, to make it simple, I think it goes way back and it was the pre-flood Pangaea. When, when all the continents were together before the massive flood uh, talked about in the Epic of Gilgamesh, all the pagan texts, the Bible, Quran, before that great flood, I think that Tartaria, or what we call Tartaria, it, uh, it was like the one world civilization. Like there was one great civilization that had great technology, like free Wi-Fi, power plants, all the technology that we have today. They had some semblance of that, you know, at one point. And I think that uh, a lot of that knowledge was lost, but a lot of it was also kept and hoarded for a very long time. 
by the architects of civilization, the bricklayers, if you will. The masons, yeah. For, mm. And it's not, it's not to discredit. I mean, you know, there's a certain like uh, understanding I have where it's like, why give like the secrets of the universe to the public? You know what I mean? Like, it makes sense mm. to a degree. I disagree yeah. with that, but there is kind of a, uh, there is kind of like a, um, you can't have everyone knowing everything sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, absolutely and, not. In order for there to be a power dynamic at all, there has to be some information withheld by like a ruling class for it to all for it all to work and even if you told everybody all of the knowledge and gave it all to them most of them wouldn't understand it and the ones that would most of them wouldn't know what to do with it Definitely, or wouldn't yeah. be able to do anything with it i think there has just to be fuck a their heads dynamic up. what do you think about like people people kind of have this delusion that there can never be like they're like there does not need to be anybody in power and i think that like that's true to a degree the problem is that yeah. nobody that is ever in power I mean, there has been people that have represented the people, but most mm. people in power don't represent the people. So that's kind of like a the age old dynamic is it's like, like who's going to be our leader? Who's going to be our leader? And the the, the thing is, yeah. it's like a real leader doesn't like have his own agenda type shit. Like, what do you think about like power dynamics and politics, um, ancient and new? Okay, so. If you'd asked me this like 10 years ago, I would have given you a completely different answer. I used to be a hardcore, like anarcho communist or anarcho capitalist. Like I, I would have told you, yeah, we don't need a head of state. We don't need a state. We can all just get along, but that's not reality. That's not reality. If you, it, no matter what, if you stripped the state today, if, if you knocked out all the lights and took out all of the uh, infrastructure that allows the power system that we have in place to operate, and you took that away and you cut all of the politicians heads off not saying anybody should do that but you know it might happen but <laughs> get the nsa listening now we got our friends listening but uh yeah no um if you That's took true. the power if you took if you took our government away tomorrow um a new government would roll in pretty quickly you know it would somebody's going to come in and fill that vacuum there's always going to be somebody that's going to take more. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just the nature of reality. Like, it's not fun. I don't like it. I don't think anyone likes it, you know? But, yeah, uh, if you try to get everybody to, uh, it's like, and you'll talk to a lot of anarcho-communists or anarcho-capitalists or just hardcore anarchists, and they'll tell you, well, we just need to educate everybody. We just need to educate everybody. I think that is not only disingenuous, but it's arrogant to think that you can condition, you can school out human nature from people. That's 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 not how it works. Yeah. You you can try to condition some people. Some people are going to go for it, but you're not going to be able to take the uh, the beast out of the out of man. You know, like there's always going to be that drive for more. That there's always going to be somebody that wants more. That dog. That's just how it works. That dog. Yeah, you can't take the dog. <laughs> yeah, exactly, bro. Yeah, you can't take the dog out of the out of the dog. <laughs> yeah, out of the boy. Yeah, out of the dog. Um, but that's that's a good point because I, the way I I would I kind of I'm starting to connect with what you're saying is it's like it's like mob bosses. Like if there's a mob boss gets killed, somebody's gonna take their place like immediately. Yeah, like the consigliere or whether there's inner gang war, there is always gonna be similar to normal politics. There's always gonna be. There's never not going to be criminal organizations like somehow somebody's going to find something that's like um, illegal and like profit off of it. You know what I mean? Same yeah. somehow same way people that find stuff that's legal and profit off of it. You know what I mean? So, it's yeah, like, exactly. It, it, the, no, matter what, no matter what rules you set up, somebody will figure out a way to bend those rules and gain a little bit more power. Even if you think you have it 100 percent locked in a new system, you know, so. Yeah, it's just human nature, man. So I think it's better to uh, propagate a system that like caters to human nature, like capitalism. I'm, I really believe in capitalism, like which is just an economic system. I really couldn't pick like a government system that I could subscribe to. I guess I'm more of a libertarian if you like picked it apart or whatever and analyze it. I'm I don't know. I don't subscribe to a party. Yeah, but yeah. I do like capitalism. I like the uh, spirit of entrepreneurship. I like the idea of uh, people being able to run their own businesses and not having like too much fucking paperwork to get in the way of the money. You know, 
I feel like um, when the state takes over the uh, the money sector, people have less money. You know, it's when it's in the private hands. It's when it's when the money's in the private sector. When you have like innovators and businessmen, the wealth it, the the wealth comes from wealthy people making moves. You know, when you restrict wealthy people with taxes and shit, there it's just everything's just going to get worse. It's just um, and socialism really is just a. It's just a cheap scam to consolidate power to the upper class and to eliminate the middle class and to, uh, like, alleviate the possibility of social mobility. You know what I mean? Up a hierarchy. I feel like they sell it to everybody because it's such an emotional argument. It's easy to get behind it. Like, power to the people, tax the rich, feed the poor. These are all things that we can agree on. But um, it doesn't work out like that, you know? Like, all communist systems have always been a super class of oligarchs that rule everything. And then in order to keep control of a society where the means of production is in the hands of the state, it's either by brute force or they have to like lull everybody with this like Western degeneracy, go to the clubs, spend your money, fuck a bitch. You know, like they just, you know, you see how Europe is now, you know? So it's, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think, uh, I think, I think socialism is a cheap dream and a scam that they're uh, definitely selling out to everybody successfully. But I think there's a backlash now over the last like three years since COVID. It feels like the pendulum swinging and a lot of young people are kind of like backing away from socialist ideologies. Mo- more young people aren't going to college where they introduce these ideas. So if, I feel like the pendulum's kind of shifting, if you know what I mean. Like culturally, it's be bad though. Like, for like all the communist girls that I met are so fucking hot, though. I'm not gonna lie, yeah, they're the hottest. They're so yeah, you need hot. a communist girl, you gotta make her a capitalist. <laughs> I can change her, I can change her, um, I can fix her. I can fix her. <laughs> she She's like, yeah. she has AIDS, I can fix her. I can, fi- I can, <laughs> I can yeah, fix I can her. fix that. Yeah, I yeah. thought so. <laughs> she fixed me. <laughs> she fixed me. <laughs> nah, what do you think about a um this is like a completely different topic, but now that we're talking about AIDS, um AIDS isn't really I like it, I'm into it. I'm just, I'm just uh but, but what do you think about like a, um because there might be a crowd, there's there's definitely they're there of people with STDs. What do you think about an S T D dating app? Sexually transmitted demons? I would invest. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, like, literally, like, if you have AIDS and you only want to have sex with people that have AIDS, yeah. because then you won't get AIDS. But what if there is a we'll call it the, we'll call it givers. The giver, the givers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what we'll call it. Me and you should make that. I'm down. I'm I'm down to invest in that. Hey, people with HIV need to fuck too, and I don't want to fuck them. I'm not fucking them. Yeah, that. <laughs> it's kind of like um. It's kind of like giving people Narcan, you know, like they're going to do drugs. Like, you know, why don't we give them an outlet to um to have sex with each other? Like, this is not even a joke, yeah. really. It's actually like something. 2024 that, starter in. pack. Narcan, prep pills. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> Narcan, prep. Um, fuck. What else do you Clean need? needles. Yeah, raincoat. Raincoat. <laughs> Spoon. Uh, so, Tartaria. Um, Tartaria. So, how did, where did the um? What's like the common? I want to say like this. Yeah, let's go there. Evidence or like a reasoning behind it. Like, what's 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 the common evidence or reasoning people find for Tartaria? That's a difficult question to answer. So I will answer it like this. Um, I'll give everybody a good entry point into the rabbit hole. What got, got me into this? Just look up. The I believe it was Chicago World Fair. And if you look this up, you'll see that in 1891, it was the it was the year they unveiled electricity to the American public, and they did it at the Chicago World's Fair, 1891. I think they called it the uh, the Great White City or something. They lit the whole city up with electricity. With the you, you good? Your screen right. went out for a second. I'm looking it up right now. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so their official story is that if you go look at these pictures, it's like great grand Roman architecture that not even Lockheed Martin could recreate today. 
if you have $2 billion, nobody can recreate the shit that you see at the Chicago World's Fair. It's like insane out of this world architecture. There's like a fucking Ferris wheel that's like monolithic in size. Like I, I wouldn't even know how to describe how big it is. It's like, it's, it looks like fucking Titans built it. And their, their whole explanation, the official mainstream historical narrative is that they built these buildings in like three or four years and then did the World's Fair, showed off the electricity, had everyone come and look at all this ancient looking architecture that they allegedly built in three or four years. And then they burned it all the fuck down. They just burned it all down. I think that it was a big, big joke on the public and that that shit, that architecture and all that all the statues and everything you see at the Chicago World's Fair was ancient and old and had been there for a long time. And they burned it down as like a big fuck you to everybody. As in like, we're going to show you all this. We're going to show you electricity that we've been hoarding for centuries. And, uh, and now we're going to burn it in front of your fucking face. And we're going to erase your history. And you're not going to know where you really came from. You know, what our true origins are. This is crazy. And that's what led me down this rabbit hole. That's when I started looking into the Chicago World's Fair, it became undeniable that some of this architecture and the stories behind all this shit were bullshit. And then I got into the mud flood theory about how there's been all these multiple kind of smaller resets throughout history where civilizations just got wiped out by mud floods. And that's why there's all these buildings on, underground and shit in major American cities. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just a rabbit hole. But yeah, the 1891 Chicago World's Fair is how I entered the rabbit hole. So that's what I would suggest any listeners, wow. anybody listening, any Little Rex fans, any Pollute Your Soul fans listening, dig into that and have your mind blown. So, wow, okay. So It's crazy, right? And in as little as six months, Americans learned about moving sidewalks, phosphorus, lands, Cracker Jack, Juicy Fruit, Quaker Oats, Futurama. Shredded Wheat. The hamburger and suggestively suggestive <laughs> belly dance known as the Hoochie Coochie. The first Ferris wheel designed by some guy named Ferris. Um, yes, Nikola Tesla. Mueller? My f Nikola Tesla, like, get out of the way. Nikola Tesla was like totally talking to aliens. Just get that out of the way. Like, yeah, everybody knows dude. that. Do you know about the, the Baron Trump book? from like 1901 or whatever that about the the last president that is crazy. that's insane yeah that's a whole other rabbit hole i wouldn't be able to regurgitate all the specific information about it i would sound like an idiot trying to talk about it but yeah that's that's a crazy one yeah um okay let's hear it. let's let's if we were in the room together crazy we got to we got to get in the room together what are you going to do in person podcast we just get Jamie to pull it up for us, you know? Yeah, Jamie, pull that up. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I do. I mean, I'm in Delaware, though. Like, when I have, like, I have this rapper that just opened for, like, Lil Darky. So, it's like, and he, I, he's a day one homie. Like, and he nice. just pull, he just pulled up and did it. We have, I have a basement studio type thing now. Um, I used to do it. Nice. Home. So, like, you know, if you're ever near Philly, you know, <laughs> we'll do it. Oh, yeah, gang. Already, man. You know I'll holler at you if I'm up there. I'll be coming up there soon, actually. I was supposed to be in New York City a few weeks ago, but that got canceled. It wasn't for a show or anything, but I'll be up there soon. I love New York yeah. City, so I'll just take the train. I could bring my friends that rap, and we'll just all hang out. I went to saw. I met Teddy Slugs at um. Oh, nice. At Semper's show, I went to. Semper's doing Beach. big things. Nice. Separate Tara reads the shit. Tara reads fire. Yeah. Um, Yunk was bunk. Well, Yunk was there. Um, Word. I see. see. Ah, it's a great day, eh? but whatever, you know. Like, <laughs> <I love laughs> but it's like you know, yeah. I can't talk about it. everybody's. Everybody's gone to the great day show. A great day show. Um, no doubt. This is crazy though. You're no really doubt. Going. This I don't understand how this shit is not there. Like, you know. Yeah, but now yeah, that's wild. I mean, I mean, why would you? Why would you want to keep this when you got O Block now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we went from that to O Block. National monument. Um, <laughs> much more culturally. They need a. And they need a statue of that quality of six nine with a bullet hole in his head on O Block. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, and I've been off of heroin for three now, so no more heroin. That's good. Yeah, you, you know can't what? get it anymore. It's all fentanyl. Yeah. <laughs> it's not worth the if risk. If heroin was still heroin, I'd be doing it. It's already bad, plus it's also not worth the risk, too. It's like, and also. Yeah, fuck all that shit. It's, it's I like whole, to be alive. Yeah. Being alive is a cool drug. <laughs> yeah, cool drug, yeah. Very thankful. Uh, I, I'm fucking like what? Year and a year and a half from like, you know, a little bit of, you know, pills and weed. You know, nothing. I wasn't doing nothing crazy. Like you know, pills like, are crazy these days, though, my friend. Stay away from pills, man. I wouldn't. You know, too many people are fucking dropping. You feel like pills. shit. Like they're not even that. Like. They also just like, yeah. they, like it's just like it just and kratom. I was also fucking bulling off kratom though. Like people, oh uh, yeah. If you're if you're like a recovering addict, like you know, and you're you've been like hardcore and opiates, like do kratom. Like it's good for you. Like I know people who yeah. did like seven years sober from you know heroin, fucking living in Kensington, PA, fucking you know what I mean, doing that do kratom yeah. stuff and are very successful. Hell yeah. But. For I did trade them for about eight months. Yeah, it's 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 a good like transition. It's kind of like Zins, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, Zins for heroin addicts. Yeah, yeah, Kratom like, saved my life, honestly. Shout out to Kratom. But if you're somebody who's like never done any opiate before ever, and you just start like drinking like fucking <laughs> two scoops of fucking Kratom, like I was... yeah, you'll you'll be out of there. You'll be fucking mad squad, bro. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be like, what the fuck? And then I and then I, and I was doing <laughs> OC, like it is is bad. But um Yeah, dude. I'm glad you're off that shit, man. Are you uh are you hundred percent sober and clean from, from everything? Yeah, I don't like now. Or are you I'm California sober? sober? No, I don't I don't I don't it's not that I don't believe in that, I just can't do that. Like I don't I already don't I already got never you. drank before, like I don't drink, so it's like um Word. But I got hundred and eight days. Not alcohol today, my friend. That's good. <clears throat> I was changed yeah. looking like a motherfucker though. Like, oh my god! Like American uh, spirit, baby, yeah, all day. I always, I love the love because they're too expensive for me. So I would get the fucking shields. Yeah. Um, I would. Oh okay. <laughs> Anybody yeah. that had American spirit, I'd be like, yo, can I bum a cig? <laughs> yeah, a no cig? doubt. These are the best, dog. I love the spirits. The blue ones. Too. Yeah, I like tobacco. Was that the blue ones too? Yeah, the blue ones are great. Yeah, the blue and the yellow. I like the blue and the yellow. Camel Crush. Yep. Camel, I was going. I was off Camel Crush. Those things, fucking. Mm, I love that Camel. Have you ever had Camel? Camel Crushes crush are good. Yeah, That's hell yeah. The first time I ever smoked a Camel Crush was on my seventeenth birthday. I was at a club in Houston called Numbers. And I was rolling on like four big fat blue dolphin quad stack ecstasy pills. And I was sweating my balls off. And this girl came outside and she was handing out packs of camel crushes because they had just come out. And it was like some sort of promotional thing. And she gave me like three free packs of camel crushes on my 17th birthday. That's crazy. And I smoked That's like crazy. 20 of them. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, wish, I wish that I was there on my 17th birthday. <laughs> But now I don't I don't it's smoke fun. cigarettes anymore. But if if there's like a wedding, you know, I'll smoke mm. a cigar. You know, like for sure. I love cigars. I like an occasional cigar. I can't do them all the time, but I chain smoke. I chain smoke when I can. I chain smoke towards the end of the day. When I wake up, I don't I don't smoke anything. I work out and fucking like breathe air. That Tate Andrew Tate meme, breathe air. Yeah. <laughs> like for real, have to do that. And I don't vape. I don't like vapes. Yeah, I mean, it's Can't basically just as bad as doing cigarettes. Like, everybody knows cigarettes are bad, but it's like, it's it's just the, all or, it's like all or nothing, really. It's not like, you, yeah. you know. Cigarettes are cool, though. What, vapes? <laughs> yeah, cigarettes. I feel vapes are kind of cool, too. No, no, but no, cigarettes no, are I like. I to say, cigarettes are cool. Cigarettes are cool. Yeah. If that's what yeah, you were going to say, cool. that. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> like, I love seeing a movie and it's like you know what I'm saying like you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying like fuck I don't know about it have you seen the movie scene where the, the fat guy walks up to Bill Burr and he's like you can't smoke here and he's vaping 
in his face and remember <laughs> smoking a cigarette and he's like what are you what are you doing like, <laughs> what movie is that i've seen it on youtube short but i, I don't know what movie that is i think it's called old dads or something okay <laughs> it's, it's one of i like bill burr movies. he's so funny yeah yeah i love bill burr yeah i love comedians what do you think of matt rife pretty boy let me look up him he a he's funny he did no, i'm just um, matt yeah <laughs> He's Damn. a female to male. Yeah, he's pretty boy, but he's he's funny. A lot of girls like him, but his Netflix special was like all for the guys. So it was just making fun of girls the whole time. It was funny. It was pretty base. What a... Mm. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, no, I've never... I think I might have seen him around. Um, he's like kind of another Crombie Fitch model that does comedy. Yeah. Like fucking, fucking, uh, what's it called? <laughs> I go to Dartmouth, fucking type shit. I go to Dartmouth and play lacrosse type shit. I, fucking, I, I go to Stanford with Xander, fucking type people. <laughs> For real. Yeah. So I like uh, comedians I like. I like George Carlin and Richard Pryor and Eddie Murphy. Those are my yeah, three favorite. Carlin. And Mike Epps. Mike Epps is a goat and underrated. I like him better than Dave Chappelle. Yeah, yeah Dave Chappelle is funny as shit, but Mike Epps, I remember watching him meet the Blacks for like the first time when I was like 10, and I was like laughing my... I watched that before I watched The Purge. It's honestly better than The Purge. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> when, uh, yeah, that's a good one. Everything Mike Epps touches is good. I forget who is in it that was funny. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson was in it, I think, and he wore like some wig or some shit. What? In that movie. I forget. For real? In Meet the Blacks. Or it was Snoop Dogg. One of those two. <laughs> um Mike Epps is hilarious. Um shit. Do you know Carlin. who do you know who Jay Arnez is? I see that Mexican dude that talks about car like like shit. Like uh, hold on. Jay, <laughs> I think I know you're talking about. Is he like a deaf comedy jam '90s shit? If you look up his early shit, oh, no, that's no. the fuck. That shit will have you dying on the floor, bro. That shit will have you dying. He's one of the funniest fucking comedians of all time. That's a that's a gym right there. But I look into him. Um, shit. What's your favorite like sketch TV show kind of type shit? Ooh, okay. Um, I like In Living Color. In Living Color is good. Um, Mad TV was the shit. I love Mad TV. Um, let me think. Fuck, there were some good ones on like IFC that were only around for a little bit. You know, I like the uh, type shit. Yeah, yeah. I liked um Yucko the Clown. I like Yucko. Mm. But that's more of a short. I think that was on NTV. He might have been on IFC as well. But um, off the t off the top of my head, off the dome, I'd have to say In Living Color is probably my favorite sketch comedy. It, mm, like but that. no, even out Million Dollar Extreme, World Peace, World oh. Peace takes the cake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I fucked with them. Their fan base For is sure. crazy though. But like, I like the content. Yeah. But I don't like the fan base. Like, they're very like. Yeah. They're, they're too yeah know. the fan base is whatever sam high's a genius though he's a legend and a genius yeah um if you like that though i want to know if you what do you think of like the viewist universe like uh clerks or like jay and silent bob like have you gotten into that or no oh yeah i love clerks clerks is one of my favorite films of all time the original clerks yeah i uh that's that's one of the classiest comedies of all time man that's it's one of the greatest films seriously it's like top five movies for me. Definitely. Yeah, Clerks is great. Dogma, Jay and Silent Bob. I didn't like the reboot. I felt like the reboot was way off point, but it was cool to see them back together, I guess. But yeah, Clerks, Clerks 2 is funny. Um, Chasing Amy. My favorite part of Chasing Amy is the part where he's like, all right, this is... Uh,
Oh, and he, he draws an intersection and he, he puts Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, uh, male hating dyke, and super hot lesbian friend or whatever. And then he was like, all right, which one gets to the carrot in the middle of the road first? And he was like, uh, the super hot lesbian dyke or the or the the super male hating lesbian dyke. And he's like, why is that? And he's like, I don't know. And he's like, because the other three are uh, figments of your fucking imagination. <laughs> like that's, that's so true. Yeah, it's so fucking funny. <laughs> like people yeah, chasing that movie great. sometimes, like that don't understand it. But like the reason he made the movie is because like his brother is gay. So it's like, like he's very. It's a very like. It's a good movie. Like it's a. It has a lot of good themes. In it's it. all in good taste. Love. Yeah. It's definitely all in good taste. It's about real shit, you know. It's about real shit, shit that you'll like encounter. Yeah, like, like, it, that shit is not, like, so, like, one-sided, like, being gay or straight. Like, I feel like there's there's gay people, and then there's bisexual people, and then there's all that other shit. But for me, yeah, it's just gay, bi, pan, sexual, which is basically bisexual, but other shit with it. Yeah, so yeah, with the gender it, stuff, yeah. Yeah. Which, I feel you. So it's, like, it's kind of, like... <laughs> That movie is kind of a genius in its own way, and also like, it's some of the best Ben Affleck acting, and it really made Ben Affleck's career. To be honest, like early, early on, that was before Goodwill Hunting, by the way. So people kind of don't yeah. really know about that. It that's, was, yeah, that's true. That paved the way for him to be in something like Goodwill Hunting. Yeah, I feel like Chasing Amy and Goodwill Hunting are Ben Affleck's best films. Have you seen his brother act in Manchester by the Sea? I've never seen Manchester by the Sea. I have not. I didn't even know Casey Affleck was in that. He's the main. He's the main guy in it. So basically, it's like, it's basically two hours of him being sad because he's uh, a bunch of people and his family died, and it's so oh, it's kind of like sad, funny. Okay. Where like, where <laughs> that like, sounds funny, actually. Like, it's like <laughs> Maybe I'm a sociopath, him. but it's just two hours of him, like of a nurse going up to him and like, "Your brother is dead." He's like. Okay. And then he starts like screaming. <laughs> it's like it's like but, your family died in a fire. Okay. Takes guns cop and tries to kill himself but can't because he didn't load the trigger back. It's a fucking beautiful movie and it's very like sad comedy, but it's like the one I think they chose the, the right most, actor for that. It's one of the most well acted movies ever. Really? And it's on the Amazon Prime. All it's right. like an Amazon Prime movie. That's also another plus. I hate when I tell a movie to somebody. Like, if you tell somebody to watch the movie Kids, you cannot find that anywhere because it's one of the yeah. most, like, banned. You, you should. Everybody, like, <laughs> hates it, but not really. Like, some people like it and hate it. Like, have you seen that movie Kids? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I've seen Kids. I'm a big Harmony Corinne fan. And Kids is. So there's, there's two movies I think of when I think of New York City. And it's kids and the movie Pie, the black and white film. I don't know if you've seen that or not. Let me look that up. P.I. Pie, like the number Pie. Such a good movie. But yeah, kids and Pie, that's what I think of when I think of New York City. Kids is like a cultural fucking landmark. Respects. Like when I watched it, I was like, this is like everything I've ever wanted to write about, like, like, cause I'm a, you know, I'm a screenwriter and shit. I mean, even when I'd write songs, like, even after watching the movie, I'm like, man, like, that reminds me, like, songs I've listened to, like, too. Yeah. And shit, like that song, that that movie is like, because everybody's been around a character from kids, like, if most yeah. people have, not everybody, <laughs> yeah. but most people have been around a character from kids, like somehow somebody's running totally. to somebody you know it's so real absolutely yeah it's yeah it's so it's very there's something very visceral about seeing kids actually act the way they do it's funny because the movie is very accurate it's like what kids do especially in new york in the 90s you know they get fucked up they, they do drugs they do risky shit and they fuck and they spread all kinds of cooties around <laughs> it's real it's real shit but there's something about it makes people uncomfortable seeing like the visceral reality of uh, what, teenagehood, oh, you know, shit. adolescence. You probably fucked up too. I was fucked up, like you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah, yeah, definitely. I was a kid watching that. I was like 16 watching that. Like, damn, this is fucked up. 
And of course, the ending is just like, it's like the ultimate punchline. It's, um, you know, I think kids kind of set the tone for a lot of those late 90s, 2000s indie films with those fucking dark endings, you know? Um, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie The Minus Man with Owen Wilson, where he goes, or he floats, or he's a nomad, he's a drifter on the West Coast, and he just, like, kind of hitchhikes around and poisons people with this, like, bottle of mysterious poison he has. It's so fucking funny and twisted, man. It's so oh, fucking... There's a... Tabbed it, but that sounds cool. It's funny, man. Yeah, and it's kind of got, like, a, a taste of kids in it, you know? Like, that real visceral, like, just twisted, surreal, dark, but, like, there's something very... Um, um, encompassing of reality in it, you know? It encompasses some, like, real thing. That, that's why it's uncomfortable, you know? Definitely, yeah. Um, what was I saying about? What were you talking about with kids? Kids is like, um, oh, so banned. Yeah, you can't get it anywhere. We were fucked up as kids, like, um, yeah, I, I was. I mean, like, I was fucked up until like a year and a half ago. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just now, I just like, Me too. Grew, you know what I mean? I just now grew grew out of it, but like. When you're when you're young, young, like when you're like twelve, yo, like well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yeah. In two years, life for me changed, and you probably kind can kind of relate to this, maybe not. But me and you both kind of you more so than me. Sorry, you're a little older than me, but you kind of grew up in a time yeah. where there was no social media. You know, like right for you, there was no social media for you younger when you were younger. Kind of, you're like twenty, yes, what, 25, I, 26? I'm thirty two. I'm a nineteen ninety one baby. So yeah, you know, you know, a, yeah, no social media for you. I'm a, I'm a elder in the tribe, yeah, um, dude. Uh, I'm kind of like of that first generation. Like we were, like when I was 12, I had an AIM, like AOL Instant Messenger with the little buddy icons, and uh, we had a, I had a Zenga. I don't know if you know what a Zenga is. X A N G A. It was like an online journal. It was like a Tumblr before Tumblr. You could like edit the HTML code and customize it and like post pictures and GIFs and shit. And then I had a vampire freaks, which was like MySpace before MySpace, but just for goth kids, you know? And then I had a MySpace when I was like in eighth grade. So we were kind of the first, like the late eighties, early nineties babies were like the first guinea pigs of social media, but we didn't have like smartphones is what changed it. And that came out like Oh seven when I was like a freshman in high school or some shit. So that kind of changed it because then everybody could broadcast. Before smartphones, that was when the internet was cool. That was when it was like only like nerds were on the internet, like on like 4chan, you know, like in all the deep cracks of the web, you know, where you could find the real internet culture, like E-bombs world or, or like something awful and all that shit. So yeah, and then smartphones ruined it. So that's sort of like how I look at it at least. <laughs> but yeah, I was kind of like proto social media, you know? But, like, for me, like, uh, and I don't know about you, but, like, I went through two things. So, when I, in 2014, I was in uh, fourth grade. Um, I was in fourth grade. I was 10 years old. I didn't have, uh, before, in the early stages of fourth grade, I didn't have a phone or anything like that. And then I went from that to a year and a half later, I was, like, in 2016, 2015, I was 12. I was in middle school. I had a phone. Everyone near me had a phone. Everyone had Uvu. Everyone had Instagram. Everyone had Kick. Everybody knew everything about everything. You had to look a yeah. certain way. You had to act a certain way. You had to listen to this type of music. If you listened to these songs for longer than two weeks, those songs were old, and you had to listen to whatever was new, and you had to always, like, it was this crazy fucking culture. And that culture... Oh, uh, yeah. I can't of, imagine like, that the, the herd mentality is probably working so much in, like, middle school and high school with social media. I can't even imagine that, because it was bad already without social media when I was in fucking, like, middle school, high school type shit. So, yeah, I can't imagine what you're saying. I remember, that I remember would, like, fucking, like, everybody uh, was texting me. She was like, yo, this, this, um, this girl, she's going to let you, like, like, because we would go to these, like, trampoline parks and shit and, like, just hang out there for, like, four hours fucking just jump on the trampolines and there would be like dodge nice. and shit 
and, and hell yeah and djs and shit and so then, you can dog a wrench you can dog a ball yeah like like skies <laughs> and type shit and and fucking so yeah. we, could, we would go to them and then there these the uh so this girl was like yo like i was like what 13 and she was like yo you're I'll let you, you know what I'm saying, grab my ass tonight. And I was like, oh, shit. So <laughs> I shut up, and then I pussy out. So then I go home and I start, like, shooting my leg with BB guns. Like, I'm like, fuck. I'm a pussy. Like, and it's like, it's like just because, like, all this fucking weird shit, like, it all fucked me up. And everybody, yeah. like, it was like, and then eventually it got worse with, like, the drugs and then everybody's filming like when you get in a fight everybody fucking starts filming it you know what yeah. i'm saying so then you gotta yeah. you gotta be the best in that fight or else you're gonna look like an asshole yeah now you're the dude they got his ass whipped on camera by fucking timothy yeah exactly so i think that's another thing that like um that that even though there's no cell phones and kids kids can definitely relate to that in like uh you you when you're around people doing certain things it's like if everybody's like pun it's like the scene when they beat up the old guy. It's like if you didn't join yeah. in fighting that dude, like you're a pussy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And by their exact rules. Yeah, when in reality you're the pussy for joining in, you know? Yeah. Or whatever. That's how it works. I yeah. Yeah. People people will do fucked up things when they get into a group. You get people into just a small group of four, five, six people, they and especially kids. Kids will turn vicious. People say kids are innocent. Children are the children are not fucking innocent. You leave them alone for an hour and a half unattended, they'll fucking Lord of the Flies. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? The, yeah, like like uh, it, it can only take. You can't take the, the dog out of the dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it can only take like two <laughs> people. And you're yeah, fucking two people together. Yeah, Dylan and Eric. <laughs> yeah, the the, the boys. <laughs> Um, <laughs> man, I'm gonna have them on the podcast soon. Oh. <laughs> Word, let me co host for that one, man. Yeah, <laughs> the four archangels, and, but, and uh, <laughs> Bones is gonna be the soundtrack for that as well. <laughs> and have Bones Word. in the background with a microphone, like, hell yeah, <laughs> fucking surrender, Dorothy. That would be lit. Yo, we need to, speaking of bones, we need to get a hold of Eddie Baker and we need to get a SoundCloud boxing league going. SoundCloud rapper boxing league. Fuck yeah. You know how fucking lucrative that would be? That would make so much money. It would be so fun. It'd be so good for the scene. Everyone wants to watch their least favorite SoundCloud rapper get his ass whooped. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like diamonds on my dick. Or, like, or fucking like, um, fucking <laughs> smoked perp. Or fucking who else? Yeah, who else could you get in there? Who's you could do a lot of matches. <laughs> who's annoying? Uh who's annoying? I just want to see Space get a... beat up everybody. Like I just want to see him like <laughs> fuck everybody up. Like <clears throat> that'd be cause, fire. Because yeah, he would beat Space everybody. goes he would beat the world. He's like he's like a fucking um he he would beat everybody, you know. And then I'd be he would his, be uh, so many people that at the end of it, 20 people would jump him. Yeah. Yeah, the whole ASAP crew. Yo, I would be a Space Ghost Perp's towel boy. Oh, yeah. I would, I'd, I'd be like, my right off. I'd be like, you good, dog? Cut my eye. Cut my eye. 12 more rounds, man. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. I'd be his, I'd be his like, um, I'd uh, I'd give him like a like a feeding tube of PCP like I'd or fucking like whatever <laughs> however you do it I don't forget how you do it you I don't know much about PCP because I haven't done it um I, I'd hold it you gotta smoke it, it. Thing. you gotta smoke it. it in a blunt that you thought was weed and in the back seat of a car yes. <laughs> with your friend <laughs> that's, that's how you do PCP like that's a story from your your life. Yeah, I've definitely uh, been in the wrong hood when I was a kid. Got past the wrong blunt, hit that shit, had had a wild night. That's definitely happened before. I've definitely uh, been past a bad blunt, hanging out with the wrong people I didn't know too well. It was fun. 
And then you're eating hog and training day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You ever had your shit pushed in real good? <laughs> like, yeah. You know, Houston's dangerous, man. You got to watch out. These streets don't play. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you just don't like that the can Texans happen. At all, though. You don't like the Texans at all? I like Deshaun Watson as a quarterback. I liked um, who was the fucking uh, big white dude. He has a tight end. I can't even remember his name. Fucking, I like that guy. See, I don't know. I don't. I'm. I'm more of an NBA fan. I'm more of an NBA fan. But yeah, I don't watch pro sports that much, man. I don't have time for it. But um, I wish I could make more time because I do like gambling. Okay. Who um? Who's your um? What's it called? Uh, and NBA. Team. NBA. Rockets. Rockets all day, baby. Are they good? I don't know nothing. They're pretty mediocre right now. They got a young team. A lot of people in development. Um, <clears throat> they look promising. Uh, what's his name? They got Jalen Green. That's the star right now. He's like the star guard. He's pretty good. But they got a lot of young guys. So we'll see what happens. I haven't kept up with it too much, but. Uh, I think they're 50-50 right now, so they're fighting for, like, the eighth spot in the playoffs or whatever the fuck, so hopefully they make it. If they make it to the playoffs, I'm going to a playoffs game. Courtside, be right there with uh, with Paul Wall, so. <laughs> Do you know Paul Wall or no? No, definitely not. Definitely not. I've met, uh, I've met a few people from the Screwed Up Click. I got to meet uh, Devin the Dude. I got to meet Devin the Dude. That was cool. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard Devin the Dude, but... I haven't, but um, what's your, like, idol that you've met or haven't met? Let's just talk about who you've met. I don't want to, like... Yeah. Who I've met. Okay. So, um, the coolest celebrity that I've met and that I know personally is uh, Kendra Malia from White Ring. I used to live with her in New York City. And um, rest in peace, Kendra. She passed away in uh, October 2019. But uh, I used to live with her, uh, so I knew her really well. Let's see. I've met met a lot of rappers. Um, I've met a whole lot of H-Town rappers. Trey The Truth. I've met uh, C-Stone, the breadwinner. I met a young star. Um, I met Ronnie Spencer. That was cool. Ronnie Spencer approached me at a guitar center and invited me to a studio sesh. And uh, he's the guy who's singing on, you know, that UGK song, One Day? One day you're here, baby, and then you're gone. Yeah, that's him singing on that song. He's an underground, yeah. And uh, he's an underground legend in Houston. And he invited me to a studio sesh, but I was too strung out on dope at the time. And I didn't make it to the studio sesh, and I never called him. So I blew that opportunity. But, um, yeah, he was really humble in the way he approached me at the store. And it was fucking crazy. Super flattering. Super, super good vibes. Um, Who else have I met? I've met a handful of people, man. I can't think off the dome, but... uh, yeah, I've, I've met a lot of people here and there, you know, different celebrity. Is that the Witch House group, White Ring? That's correct. I actually uh, met the guy that started Witch House. His name uh, is Robbie DeSaro. He started the label DeSaro Records that first put out Salem, Ooh, O-O-O or whatever, and uh, White Ring. So he was a friend of a friend of mine. So... <clears throat> okay, so yeah, I kind of got to be there at the very beginning of Witch House. So, okay, if you know a lot about early Witch House, I want to ask. Um, this might be a very annoying question for you. Very annoying. You might be very annoyed by this. I'm what not easily think? annoyed for sure. What do you think of cemetery? Cemetery. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, I thought you were going there with the conversation, and I like cemetery. The first song I heard from him was his "Goodbye Horses" cover. And uh, I was blown that's away by great, that. That is a great song to hear from him. If that's your first. Yeah. He's not singing on it, but he made the beat. Um, that Ghost Mountain singing on it. By the oh, way, dear. anybody who hears that song, that's Ghost Mountain singing. But he made that beat. That Didn't beat know was that. fucking sick. 
It's insane. It was it was insane. I heard it in Miami for the first time and was blown away. Um, I haven't heard anything else from him that blew me away like that. But maybe it's just because of Sounds of the Lambs and the song. But I like his music. I like Cemetery's music for sure. I like his aesthetic. I think um, I think he's a talented artist, and I would love to work with him. That'd be fucking badass. I would love to work with Cemetery. Um, so yeah, shouts out to Cemetery. I like what he's doing. I think he's doing a cool like second wave witch house type deal. You know, it's like Yeet meets witch house or something. I don't know. Keith Keith and it meets yeah witch house as well. Yeah. Oh. She, yeah, Chief Keith. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that hard 2013 type trap. He had this, yeah, like that this song that's blowing up now called I Hate My Baby Mama. I hate my baby or some shit like that. <laughs> Cemetery? Baby mom. No, Chief Keith. He's like, fuck my oh, okay. baby mama. Fuck my baby mama. Alright, I fuck with that. Um I gotta check that out. I haven't heard that. So you were talking about cultural engineering earlier. What do you mean by that? Like when it comes, is that when it comes to your music or is that, you said you had new content coming? Like what, what can we expect from that? <clears throat> I want to keep my sorceries as secret as possible to uh, keep the magic as potent as it can possibly be for everybody. So it's the most enjoyable, but I will say I got a lot of funny, <clears throat> funny vlogs coming out and a whole lot more intimate get to know little wretched type content and a lot of good uh good humor on the way for everybody who likes to laugh so i'll say that but yeah a lot of cultural engineering in the works we gotta uh we gotta steer the culture the way that it needs to go you know so we're just over here guiding the puppet mastery you know <laughs> definitely pulling the strings yeah you got to be the um, red cloak and eyes wide shut, the red cloak guy. <laughs> yeah, you got to be that in your reality. You have to be that guy, you know? You have to be the, the arbiter of all things that pass through your domain, you know? You have to be that. Well, I guess we should not go into that. Um, what's your viewing experience <laughs> for um, eyes wide shut? First time you watched it, second time you watched it. Well, let's just go okay. the first time and then when you said you saw it recently because you said you saw it recently yeah so the first time i saw it i was 11 and i was just getting into cinema really heavy and i had just gotten into stanley kubrick i had just seen the shining for the first time so i dug up eyes wide shut i torrented eyes wide shut and watched it and fucking uh i watched the whole thing like really late at night by myself and it was just like i don't know if i'd say disturbed I wouldn't say I was disturbed. It was it was somewhat disturbing to watch, but I, I I don't feel like it went over my head. You know, I didn't digest everything that I'd seen. I just thought I watched a crazy fucking tripped out acid trip, Christmas acid trip, you know, but uh, see you. watching it as an adult, I just watched it again for the first time recently, like a few weeks ago after Thanksgiving and uh, yeah, watching it as an adult, I'm just like, damn, like this movie has everything in it it's really a movie for couples i feel like it's a good movie to watch with your girlfriend because <laughs> at the end of the film well i don't spoil i don't know if i should spoil it but you know at the end of the film he's just like what should we do now and she's just staring dead into his eyes and she's just like fuck like the movie is about fucking you know <laughs> like, yeah. it's it's um it's a crazy crazy film i don't know i don't know uh, exactly what to say about it um, I think it shows a whole lot of, uh, reality, you know, in, in, in multiple different ways, you know, it's a very multidimensional film. I think it's like necessarily about the Illuminati, like to a degree, I think that to a degree it's about, it's more so about like relationships and shit like that. I think that, yes, there is a kind of component where it's like, um, the more power you have, the more shit you can get away with. And one of those things that you can get away with is, uh, weird sex shit. Like, you know, that's just kind yeah. of like a thing that's, that happens yeah. in life anywhere in the world, wherever there's powerful people. And yes, in the modern day America, yes, there may, there probably, there, there is an Illuminati that has crazy sex yeah. meetings and shit. <clears throat> you know what I mean? And, um, and this film may or may not have included that in <laughs> it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I don't think that's the point of the film. I actually don't think that's the point of the film. I think no, yeah, it's yeah, definitely it's more about like, 
relationships on the surface level yeah it's it's about relationships it's about uh uh the nature of man and the nature of woman it's really about what all these podcasts are talking about these days when you scroll through youtube shorts male and female dynamics you know it's um it's interesting to watch because you know the whole i think the whole crux of the film they never come out and say it but she his wife is in on it the whole time she's She's been clued in the whole time because he comes home and that mask is on the bed next to her and she's just sleeping peacefully next to it, you know? And it's like, damn, like, it's, it's a, you know, because the serpent talks to Eve first, you know? And then Eve goes to Adam and gets Adam to eat. So I think it's saying something a lot deeper there. Women develop faster than men, you know? Women have way, this is something that I've realized in the last couple of years when I hit 30, I started to really realize this, the, uh, the vast difference in men and women's like, per, uh, not perception, but experience in the world. Men have to grind and work hard and toil to have doors open for them. Women, doors are just opened right for them based on like superficial things, you know, their looks, maybe their hue personality, whatever, you know, women, but a lot of crazy doors are open to women at a very young age by older men that aren't open for me and you at like, let's say the age of 20, 21, you know? And um, it gives women a whole other like perspective and experience of this reality. And it's just, it gets really interesting when you start thinking about that. That's why I would advise all the young male, all young cis male straight listeners to avoid older women at all costs, especially a serious relationship with older women because they have game that you cannot have simply for the fact that they're much older than you and they're female, you know? And, um, yeah, I think eyes wide shut talks about a lot of those things, you know, and, um, it, it touches on all that and it touches on like man's journey, a man's journey through it. I think it's through the eyes of a man that we see it because we follow bill through this like rabbit hole of like sexuality and like romance and fidelity and how he's like haunted by the the image of his wife like fucking that sailor even though it never even happened just it, it, ha it talks a lot about things that like andrew tate and jay waller and all the red pill guys are talking about now about uh female infidelity versus male infidelity which are two totally different things they absolutely do look very different and um i think it's because men and women are different but yeah i think eyes wide shut touches on all those i think it's a more relevant film than ever before honestly and yeah, I think on the surface level, it's about the Illuminati. Like that's what most people are, are going to, you know, if you ask your average person, you ask a normie, what's it about? Well, it's about this sex cult and these powerful people. But no, I think he's using that, 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 uh, he's extrapolating that from like reality and, and using it to tell a story about something deeper about men and women. Well, I mean, so. I think I, I can't say much about what you just said because like, you just explained it better than I did, but, um, <laughs> but, but like, you know, another, another I hope I'm thing, being articulate. I'm not a very articulate person. So no, you are, you know, you are. you're good. Um, okay. I rant a lot by myself. So when I, no one's listening to me all the time, I feel like I make sense, but like, you know, all the LSD, I can't, I can't tell if I'm making sense or not. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I am. Yeah. You, you, you hit, hit the nail on the head right there. I don't know if that's the right term. Hit the you hit the nail on the hand, my friend. Texas Jesus. <laughs> the nail on the hand. Yo, that's hilarious. <laughs> but I mean, when he was making that movie, uh, before he, well, let's go to the fucking Wikipedia for it. But he, I believe, he was gonna do a uh, porn with Steve Martin. It was gonna be like a Steve Martin comedy porn about relationships. That's what it was originally. Is gonna that be. real? Um, it it didn't that's happen, definitely. but that was. Like I wonder this, how big Steve Martin's dick is. I mean, he's, good on the ban he's really good on the banjo. I assume it's pretty big. Like, if he's, he's probably got thigh slapper, bro. He's got that. <laughs> he's probably yeah. got that. <laughs> okay, so cheaper by the dozen. Cheaper by a dozen inches. Um. So, <laughs> okay, yes. He was gonna make an adapt. He was gonna adapt Arthur Schnitzler's dream story, which is a novel, um, and he was gonna adapt it into a sex comedy 
with a wild and somber streak running through it, starring Steve Martin or Woody Allen. And he was gonna it was gonna come out in the eighties. And um it was gonna be set in New York. And um Yeah. So it was gonna be like more of a sex comedy about relationships. So I think I don't think he introduced that shit until like later, like the cult shit. And already, yes, there was already cult aspects into an old the old um the what it's based off of his dream story because if you look at Trum Trum Novel, which is the name of it, um, it's from Arthur Schnitzer. It's from nineteen twenty six. And in Vienna oh, okay. in the twenty early twentieth century, like fucking where is he from? Austria. Where does Bavaria? Where where do, where does the Illuminati come from? It's fucking ah. Austria, right? Now we get to it. Bavaria, the Bavarian Illuminati. Ah, but also, if you're rich, I didn't there, know that. If you're rich, yeah, from Bavarian secret society, yeah. So fucking um from Vienna, Vienna, yeah. Yeah, no, really interesting. That, I, did, I did not know about uh, the guy who wrote the original story. I knew it was based on a story, but I didn't know anything about it. It's very interesting. Yeah. He uh, it's from Austria. So, so you're there, right? Um, fucking everybody in Bavaria had the, there's a there's a kind of a big thing of about masks, like Bavarian masks. Um, yeah, that's what those kind of the ball mask, the masquerade masks. Yeah very spooky kind of if you look them up anybody look up um crazy these these crazy fucking masks and if you're rich there and you were like doing a sex some sex cult shit in like the early you know 1900s like yeah i bet you're wearing one of these masks because you don't want people to see it yes that yeah. can be an illuminati thing or it can't be it can just be a rich thing i think that any place you have any place you have a lot of power and a lot of money um in any society will have their own Illuminati, right? Like, yeah. if there's always, there's always circles and clubs. In order to maintain any kind of power, there has to be some sort of circle that has information that's not accessible or easily accessible to others. That's how that works. That's the nature of it. So any place where there's wealth, power, anything like that, you're going to have little clubs that pop up. And little gangs, jobs, little right? Yeah, like I mean, you take any people. Exactly. And, and, and you take this to any kind of society, like even a micro society, like a, like a rehab, you know, like or a, a school or like a camp, you know, little cliques form and little groups form and it gets tribal. And that's just that's just how it works. That's just how people work. You know, rehab I don't think there's any way to for me real quick. The first time I went in, you. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Did you have a click? Did you click up in there or no? Oh yeah, I definitely. I had my tribe back in the day. I'm so cool with some of them. It's sad you get bonded to people. Like y'all go through a whole lot of shit together, and y'all are supposed to be brothers for life. And then sometimes just personality conflicts, and it's like, damn, there's no honor amongst thieves. I thought we were all in this together, but you know, uh, the real ones stay, and then people come back around. It's weird how that. That always works. But yeah, I've had a few circles that I was a part of for sure. Um, but uh, I'm a one man army out here, you know? I'm in the yeah. funk circle. That's my circle. <laughs> game. Yeah, that's right. Married to it. Hold on real quick. I'm going to get a beverage. Five seconds. Yeah, you're all good. Well, I think that we can definitely change into another topic. Audience, we're going to kind of go into another topic. Oh. Real quick, about... I'm officially sponsored by Starbucks now. Shout out! They got your boy on the payroll. So, Starbucks yeah, he's sponsored by Starbucks. We're gonna talk about yeah. um people you trust. So, who would you say you trust right now, like in the game? And then we'll talk about people you the don't Lord, trust. The Lord Jesus Christ. People. The Lord Jesus Christ. That's who I trust. And Ju uh, Jules Winfield from Pulp Fiction. That's my higher movies. power. <laughs> yeah, Jules Winfield, yeah. And uh, you know, I uh, I trust God, myself, my cat. I trust um I trust no one and I trust everyone at the same time, right? Like I trust people to the degree that I can trust them. 
So um, you got to make people jump through the hoops if you really want to trust them. You know, you got to put people through uh, through the fire if you really want to see what somebody's about. See if they'll stick their neck out for you in any kind of meaningful way. You know, if you really want to get down to trust, trust is a a key part in any relationship. Um, there's plenty of people in the game that I trust, though. I trust Vicious Vampira. Shouts out Vicious Vampira. <laughs> um, yeah, I trust everyone that I'm close to. Um, I mean, you know, to the extent that I can over Instagram. Yeah, Wouldn't trust yeah. uh, every, everybody that I know with my bank account. There's degrees to everything, right, my friends? Yeah. <laughs> so... But I have good people around me that I can trust. I have some solid day ones out here in Houston that I've known for 15, 20, shit, 25 years. So, yeah, I trust them. I trust my cameraman. Shouts out DVD fam. Have to, put, have to give him a shout out. Mm -hmm. now you said that earlier I trust is... you. I trust Pollute Your Soul. I know you're going to keep delivering good content for us all. Do you trust the content? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I trust the con. I trust the process. Trust the process. Yeah. Yeah. So you said earlier, there's this kind of like, um, whether it be type of person or kind of crews in 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 the game or in this business. Um, what would you say? Um, are red flags or people to look out for to not necessarily trust? Like if they're telling you, giving you false like um promises, like who do you say? Who do you say that is in the music scene? Um like that you know i i really wouldn't know and if i did i don't know if i would speak on their names i don't like to be a gossiper all the way no, but no, no, um don't speak their names just like like the general type of person you were saying earlier we we're talking about before the show it's very important yeah. that people learn about this yeah so um as far as the artists go 99 percent of the artists that i've encountered are usually very empathic type personalities um, super relatable, bright, sensitive people that are, uh, they might be out for themselves. You, uh, there's a lot of selfish artists, but uh, that's, that's the nature of the business. You got to push your shit, you know? There's only so much spotlight for everybody. Not everybody can be in the spotlight. So there's a lot of competition between artists and it gets toxic. But I think the, the real shady lurking sharks in the game, especially in the uh, realm that I occupy are the behind the scenes figures, people that will come out of the woodwork once you have some sort of buzz going or uh, once you get that snowball pushing up the mountain, you know, uh, all kinds of behind the scenes characters that don't make music, they don't make art, they come out of nowhere and um, they wanna manage you or they wanna help promote you. Uh, concert promoters, tour managers, managers in general, these types of characters, um are typically shady narcissistic uh borderline sociopathic psychopathic personality types that are energy vampires they want to get in between you got this scene that's all passion right like there's a lot of purity and passion and light in it you got artists like pouring their blood sweat and tears literally into their music performing on stage trying to get on stage trying to get their shit out and then you got these fucking vultury sharks that come in and try to kind of get in between everybody and get in between all of the money and the energy and the clout and to take whatever they can for themselves. And people will be really fucking weird about this shit, man. People will get weird with clout chasing. Like, you'll end up, if you're not careful, and you're not privy to the red flags on how to sense these people out. And this isn't just in the music world. This kind of goes for all walks of life. If you're not careful, you'll end up with people around you that wouldn't piss on you if you were on fire. Unless, of course, it helped their public image, because it's all about optics when you get into this public persona realm of uh, uh, power quests, you know? And, uh, yeah, you end up with a lot of sharks around you, a lot of people that don't have your best interests at heart, a lot of people that will sell you down the fucking river real quick, people that will gaslight you, people that will manipulate, they'll go behind your back and s tell people you did things you didn't do and said things you didn't say, things that they said, you know? You know how gaslighting works, though. The uh, the uh, instigator will will participate in some sort of inflammatory behavior to get a response out of you, and if they don't get the response they want, they'll turn around and accuse you of everything they did to people behind your back and try to turn people against you. There's a lot of shit like that, and people get really fucking weird with this cloud chasing shit, and it's really disgusting, and it can kind of turn 
you off from it can turn a lot of artists off from making music i think it's why a lot of artists end up quitting is because they have to deal with these characters and i think a lot of artists are young inexperienced in the world and don't know how to go about dealing with these types of personalities and <clears throat> um energy sharks energy vampires you know and um yeah i think the the story that everyone knows in the music game is the young impressionable artist that gets just fucking sucked into this like bondage by these people around him you know and they're just managing their energy and their money and they just fucking and that's that's the selling your soul right that's when you, you literally like are giving up all your sovereignty and you you have to dance to these people's tunes and then they get blackmail on you for whatever maybe you you know for xyz reason and you know they try to hold things over or whatever they'll try to gain leverage on you in whatever fucking way they can to get more in with you to to get more control over what you're doing especially if what you're doing is working that's in and that's how you'll know if what you're doing is working is when those people show up because if those people ain't showing up then you ain't really making any moves you know so yeah well have you seen like the blackmail thing happen or no is that just like a figurative um have i seen it personally uh i mean i don't you know anybody i i've seen i've seen uh yeah i've seen things like that i've seen like baby versions of that i've you know like i've seen uh how the uh like ex-girls of artists will be texting other artists screenshots of the text of the other rapper begging her, uh begging her to let him back like i love you baby i miss you so much simping hard hardcore simping and it's like those screenshots will end up in somebody's hand that you don't want it to so i've seen that kind of shit i've um i'm very aware of how blackmail operations work and uh that's definitely at a higher level than where i'm at in the music industry although these things take place at all you know degrees of power or whatever but um yeah i think uh the uh the standard blackmail operation for the music industry at, at high levels at like lil wayne kanye west type levels is to get you in a room with some girl that's underage and then get it on a camera or whatever you know some girl that looks like she could be overage though that's definitely like a technique that we've all heard of you know we'll fly you out to this island we'll have a party we'll cut loose we'll be with the boys oh uh, this politician's gonna be there you have to come and then bam oh these are the girls oh they look kind of young like yeah go talk to them you know like you're around senators and fucking bankers and big uh venture capitalists you know so it's like they'll they'll try to put you in situations like that so yeah it's it's so, tricky I mean, you gotta watch out what island you're talking about yeah, yeah, see, yeah, yeah that whole, that's what whole, all the epstein was about like um there's that one yeah. clip where some guy was like yo like i don't want to where the guy was gonna prosecute epstein like early on didn't want to kind of do it because he knew that this dude was like a intelligence operation like somebody said and epstein was involved in some form of like intelligence agency you know what I mean? It, yeah. Whether it be like CIA, Mossad, whatever it was, or both like yeah. a joint operation. Um, Pretty sure it was both if I had to put my money on it. <laughs> well, yeah, if I had to put my money, both. Um, I don't hate Jews. I just don't like, I'm not a Zionist, so, you know. No, no. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not a Zionist. Can't get down with Zionism. Love the Jewish people. Love my Jewish brothers. Yeah. But, uh, and um, I actually, uh, speaking on this note i do i will say i stand with israel i know that's a controversial topic right now i'm not for the genocide of the palestinian people but i'm definitely not for the destruction of the state of israel you know i don't think there um, should be a destruction of the state. i just think there needs to be people that coexist and i don't think like a right-wing yeah. government in israel is gonna is should e exist i think that there should be a more uh accepting government in israel and ideally allow, you know what they need, I need, them I, need just, I need to go ahead and go over there and land in the gaza strip and just settle this nonsense texas jesus will bring the peace to the texas middle east jesus, yes <laughs> you will it's in the prophecies man it is <laughs> for other like it's not it's not a simple kind of solution there's either it's not this is how i've described it. it's like 
people are like, what side are you on? Are you on Hamas side or Israel's side? And it's like, first off, Hamas does not represent the Palestinian people. First off, the no, idea, the that's idea the thing. They're trying to, people are conflating these names. These are two different things. The IDF does not represent the Israeli people or, Ju exactly. or Ju Jewish people. And Hamas definitely doesn't does represent not, Jewish people. And Hamas does not represent the Palestinian people. It's Hamas exactly. versus the IDF. It's not Israel versus Palestine. And honestly, Thank a lot you. of Israeli citizens are not like supportive of Netanyahu and what he's done. And I think that there of needs to not. be a, um, in my opinion, I think that the UN should establish Israel um, and Palestine and merge them together to be like a sovereign. Like what, what's like a kind of like a, um, how the Vatican is, where it's not like a country and it's not not a country. It needs to be this kind of like neutral zone in the world or yeah. Ever. I don't really necessarily, I'm not religious that much, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I subscribe with Buddhist ideologies because that's what I can connect with. But I do think like, if I were a politician, I would want that area to be, like, controlled by the UN and be, like, protected as a neutral state, whether it be called Israel I, I agree. or a similar government, you know, whatever. It should be preserved, protected, kept at peace, and everybody should be allowed to be there in peace and nobody should be kept being kept in an open air prison i'll be clear about that i said i stand with i stand with israel when i say that i mean i stand for um i i'm not for the destruction of israel i don't want to see israel destroyed and um yeah i stand with the palestinian and the israeli people the people not their governments so that's how i'll, I'll put that i think you you yeah. worded that very well it's the government's men. And um, yeah, it would be ideal if the UN or some sort of governmental body like that could take control of the situation and just keep it, yeah, like a like a Vatican area, like a like a district, you know? Without like a global pedophiles. district. <laughs> without the pedophiles, though, of course. Yeah, without the pedophiles, we're good on them. Yeah, we'll ship them off to uh to California. No. Yeah. <laughs> And then bomb California to the sea. <laughs> San Andreas. I think Gavin Newsom is doing a pretty good job at that. Oh, yeah. It's going to be in the seas uh, the longer he's the governor there. Yeah, if you want to see a sneak peek of California 2027, just go play the new Doom. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's going to look like, yeah. I hate him. I don't think DeSantis is cool either. I think that DeSantis is like a fucking... Stands is trash. They're all like he's like a crank anchor puppet. Yeah, they're all just a bunch of losers. Like even like yeah. I'm, um, I'm I'm low key in RFK, dude. Kind of. I don't like his views. I like RFK. On on it, he's he's a little too pro Israel, but um, but yeah. I think that overall he is my he's who I'm gonna vote for. I hate Biden. I'm not a Trump fan, but I'm I'm more of an RFK dude. Um. Yeah, I'm not a Trump fan per se. I think he's a funny guy. I think he's really funny. He's hilarious. Yeah, he's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's the first stand-up comedian president we've ever had. That's for sure. But um, he's based, yeah, I don't know what, like, what's gonna happen. What do you think is gonna happen with the election? I think Biden's gonna be the uh, the next dictator in America. I think he's gonna be the president for <laughs> until I think that after he dies, he's still gonna be president. Yeah, I think that we're gonna like him to Bernie. They're gonna fucking bring him out and fuck. <laughs> he's pretty. He pretty much already is dead. I mean, the guy doesn't know where the fuck he is half the time. It's actually, it's funny, but it's actually frightening in some ways. Hunter, Hunter Biden's gonna be the president. I would. I honestly Dude. would vote for Hunter if Hunter Biden was on there. I would vote for Hunter Biden. I would. Vote for Hunter. <laughs> I would vote Dude, for Hunter. I'd be Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden. Yeah, me and Hunter Biden need to go to Israel and Russia and Ukraine and just bring world peace. <laughs> Hunter Biden would just like throw a party and everybody's like fucking <laughs> on mushrooms and crack and fucking yeah, fucking, smoke you know crack with Hunter saying? Biden having good, having a good time. <laughs> um, I would I definitely smoke crack. With Biden. Biden. Yeah, I stand with Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden, twenty twenty four. Hunter Hunter Biden, twenty twenty four. Um. But um, fuck. What's <laughs> I got some tea for you about the Biden family that I'll talk about after this. Um, okay. Uh, 
I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. But I'm from Delaware, so that means like, and they're from Delaware, so it's like, I, I got know. you, got you. I know. I know certain things. <laughs> um, got you. Basically, though, with that scenario, I think that I honestly think that um, it's going to be the most divided election ever in American history. That's what I think. I think it's going to be like one. I think that like each party, each third party is going to get at least like 0.5 percent, some really large number. I think it's going to be like a very three-way split thing. I think each person is going to get mm -hmm. over twenty, uh, over yeah, twenty percent. I think RFK is going to get at least twenty percent or fifteen percent mm. in the election. I think Biden's going to get um, either the middle, probably the middle or middle to third place. Yeah, I think Trump's going to get a lot of votes. Um, I don't know yeah. if I think that's a good thing, but I think that he's going to get a lot of votes. Um, For and sure. I think that. Um, I honestly don't know. And that's the thing, though, is, like, next, it's, like, who is going to be the vice presidents for these people? That's another thing that's going to determine this. So what if some of the um, things merge, right? What if some things merge? Like, what if somebody is a, that's being voted in here becomes a vice president for this person? What if some person dies? What if Joe Biden dies? And who's going to be the fucking president? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we don't know. We don't know these things. But I think it's going to be one of the most unique fucking elections ever and i think it's going to be the most divided one ever it's not yeah. it, there's no more i think yes there is on most levels but on, on for this election there is no more republican versus democrat thing it's not that anymore people are evolving past that but nobody yeah. is gonna, is good. gonna do that be, it's good but not a lot of people are gonna go that way for a long time I believe in third parties. I'm involved with my local libertarian party, but I, and I'm also nice. very friendly with the Green Party in Delaware because I believe in the Green Party as well. Eco-friendly politics. No I support them. But absolutely, there is a lot of from my you know, I've heard from a lot of local smaller parties. Is there's a lot of kind of disorganization in smaller parties because they're not tapped in the local system they're not in like a a, a, a decades old system as yeah. are the democratic party system it's easy to advance in the democratic party if you've like had a family that's been a part of the it's like fucking like liz cheney like you know what i'm saying like <laughs> walk for her to get through that um yeah yeah i know exactly what you're saying <clears throat> yeah the independent parties don't yeah they're not as tapped into the power structure they don't have the history and that solidarity their foundation isn't like set in as much it's yeah it's like that but yeah support third parties always uh it's cool you mentioned the green party yeah eco-friendly parties it's funny how they've made the they made the eco issue a right left thing like for a long time i think it's changing now but for a long time it was like the right wing didn't give a fuck about the environment in the left wing like cared too much or whatever you know they had that kind of divide and conquer narrative going for a long time and it's funny because like the word conservative conserve the environment like you know you would think that these would go hand in hand but um yeah it's funny but yeah i think that um eco issues are definitely a big big thing we can't be having truckloads of vinyl chloride blown up like megatons of vinyl chloride being blown up in Ohio and uh, seeping into the water system for uh, centuries and destroying the land. We can't have that. You know, that would be a terrible thing that would happen. Yeah. And, and, and that, that causes like, I mean, besides vaccines, vaccines that causes autism. And, and I don't want to go in there. We already know that. You already know that. Yeah. 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 But anyways, Terms of but, but I yeah, love my like, there's a lot of bad things that like can be um affected by the um like corporations and that shit. That's why I respect yes. RFK Jr. because he spent you know years defending. He's an environmental lawyer. You know what I mean? That's what he yeah done. yeah exactly. What do you think is gonna happen for the election? I have no idea, man. I I can't. I, if I had to guess, um, I mean, a lot could happen. Like. Worst case scenario, World War Three starts and martial law is declared and the elections off, you know, which oh, is yeah. a possibility. It is. Like, you um, think that's, like, not going to happen, but, like, Yemen's yeah, that, already yeah, involved, Lebanon's already fucking at war, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and Russia and Ukraine, 
isn't far away from this area. It's a very geographically compact area where all these wars are erupting, you know? So the Black Sea isn't too far from Israel. And then right north of that is Russia and Ukraine. So it's like, yeah, these things are starting. So yeah, World War III could erupt in the next few months. Um, so that's worst case. I think that we're going to see a, yeah, the most divided, the most bickering we've ever seen amongst the American population is going to get nasty. It's going to get violent. But um, yeah, anybody could end up on the ticket. I think it's going to be Trump and Tucker Carlson though, on the right. And then I don't know if Biden makes it. I don't know what they're going to do with that. I think if Biden makes it and he's still able to talk and walk, they're going to wheel him out for the fucking and try to get him for a second term. Because all their other, the only other candidate I could see the left, the, the Democrats playing is uh, Gavin Newsom. You know, I don't think they're going to let RFK on the bill. And if they did, if, if they did, if it was Trump versus uh, Kennedy, well, that would be fucking insane. That would be no, insanity. He already left the Democratic Party and is independent. Oh, he's independent now. Yeah, he's uh, obviously independent. To... That's why it's okay. Well, but yeah, yeah. Okay, now I see what you're saying. So yeah, I don't know how it's gonna go. He's gonna steal a lot of votes away from Biden. It could end up being an independent versus Trump, or it could be Trump taps Kennedy for his vice presidency. I don't. know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what yeah. if they teamed up? So it could be a lot of things. A lot of things are up in the air because the party system is coming apart before our eyes in real time. I think, yeah, that's, uh, it's wild, man. So I don't know, but I think we could see Tucker Carlson and Trump. I'll say that. I could see that happening. And that would be comical and funny and awesome and insane. And it would get nasty. <laughs> it would be all those things. Go up and be like, um, so before I go into this, um, I'd like to debate Big Mike in front of everybody. Okay. I'd like to debate <laughs> Michelle Obama, I mean Big Mike, in front of everybody, okay? Because we already know that Obama's gay, okay? <laughs> Joan Rivers, she said so, yeah, man. Like, Joan, Joan Rivers could never tell a lie. <laughs> I, I just want to shout out Obama for being the first gay president. It's very, it's advancing LGBTQ <laughs> history. Like, it's like really progressive of him. Shouts out, Obama. First gay president. We love no our gay disrespect. president. There's no disrespect to you. It's <laughs> no disrespect. It's Obama it's was a, Obama was a great cheerleader for the country. <laughs> no disrespect. It no, Obama. Is. Obama's a top tier it. politician. He's a top tier politician. No, He's the most shit. real shit. You, I can't say a bad thing about Obama. Like. He's the most charismatic, well-spoken president we've had ever in our lives. Like he's, it's it, 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 like it was hard to like. Um, it's easy to make fun of like Trump or Bush. It was really easy to make fun of Bush. You know, it's really easy to make fun of Biden. But Obama was cool. You know, Obama was like legitimately cool. Yeah, he, and he was a great statesman. He was like a great spokesperson for the country. You know, honestly, if he hadn't gone after guns, he'd be remembered as like a great president. He wouldn't have like a negative. Uh, I don't think the American people would look at his presidency as a negative thing. Yeah, that's my take on yeah, Obama. I, I think, yeah, he's, he's one of those things where it's like I remember like watching speeches of him in school and shit. Like we'd had to be shown his shit or my parents would look at his shit. That that. I think that was a good, you know what, fuck it. I mean, it was a good eight years. It was a good eight years. Now that I think, of, or how many years is it? For I mean, sure. It was eight years. Yeah, yeah eight. It, was a, it was a good eight years. It was a peaceful, that was before, like, you know, I think after, you know, there's a turning point in 2016. Big turning point, major historical event, 2016 XXL freshman freestyle cypher. I think that's kind of. Like what? Kind of, <laughs> that's when the paradigm yeah. shifted, right? Before yeah, that was. It was about that time the paradigm shifted. It was Lil Uzi Vert's goat stepping that did it. He yeah. goat stepped us into the uh, into the quantum reality we live in now. <laughs> yeah. Dude, have you ever watched it carefully? He looks like a fucking minotaur in that video. The way he's stepping around, it's otherworldly. My, 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 <laughs> get my flow back. Yeah. <laughs> Mama, like, code that. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> that shit, freestyle. Everybody's been at a party where a freestyle like that happened. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, like, oh my god. Those that was mumble from, rap. Um, yes. At the lunch table type shit too. Like just yeah, roasting I each love other it. and shit. Like fucking like. <laughs> Hell yeah, I love roasts. Fucking your head look like a goober type shit. Like fucking. <laughs> oh, Humpty Dumpty time. looking ass. Oh, <laughs> like shit like that. Humpty Dumpty, watch out! I got that Dumpty Dumpty. <laughs> Smacking your girl rumpty rumpty or some shit like that. Like, <laughs> fucking shit like that, yeah. For real. Yo, when are you doing in person podcasts, bro? Um, I mean, I just do them when people like are like that near me can come. You know what I'm saying? Word. We gotta make that happen for sure. When you come to it could be fun. Whenever whenever you do a show and like we could just wherever you're staying when it happens, you could just fucking pull, I could just pull up and fucking do it. But um, fuck yeah, so yeah. Thanks for coming yeah. on the show though, for real. We had a good fucking talk. It was great. It's over already. It is. Already. <laughs> That's fuck. I'm sorry. I feel you. I feel you. How long did we go for? How long was this? An hour and a half. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. We talked. We we covered a variety of topics, man. We did. We probably could have spent the whole thing just breaking down eyes wide shut. I'm going to probably post, like, a lot of clips of this. Like, there's going to be a lot of fucking shit that people are going to want to see, though, for But, yeah. dude, thank you again. Um, stick around after. Yeah, man. Yeah, gonna thank be on, you, dude. Thank you're you so gonna much. You're going to be on again soon live. We talked about that. Hell yeah. Yeah, we'll do it right. We'll do it right for sure, man. I appreciate you for having me on, Mike. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for the kind words about my music at the beginning. If anybody wants to check me out, go check out at Lil Wretched, my Instagram at Lil Wretched, or uh, soundcloud.com slash Lil Wretched. You'll find all my tunes, all my beat tapes, all my magic. So, Link in the yeah. description as well. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, leave a rating and also... Wherever you're listening, just go in the description of this episode, find a link, listen to Lil Wretched's music, or on it'll be on Spotify, SoundCloud. I have his link to his Instagram as well. Thank you again for coming on the show. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and peace out. My pleasure, man. Have a great night, bro. Yeah.